What I can say, looking at Grizzlies' first game, Super Flight, and then Islanders that you worked on with them, the minimalism, the kind of simplicity and kind of minimal approach, and also the art direction, really, first of all, was very inspiring to me. It's, it's interesting to think of them as student projects, right? But even just as an indie developer outside of any kind of educational context, I thought, wow, this is... This is so smart how simple this is while still feeling complete and interesting, right? That there's just enough of an idea there that I want to interact with it. But from a developer's point of view, I'm like, man, they're, they're you know, I can see how this would be made, right? Mm. And it's, it's achievable. Yeah. And I, I found that very inspiring and interesting. I mean, what was the thought process that kind of led you into on, let's say, Islanders, what was the thought process that led you into that specific design and that scope and everything there? I feel like uh, it's m probably once again down to the constraints we had at university because the constraint what was make a game in four months. It needs to be done in four months. And so obviously you pick something that's a little more minimalistic, a little more realistic to pull off in that time frame. And actually making a game in, in four months meant that right from the beginning we had a very very strict time plan <laughs> so yeah basically uh, we did two weeks of prototyping at the beginning then we had a couple of weeks for making the game and then a couple of weeks for polishing so not a lot at all yeah uh, it f felt more like a very speedy game jam and then later before we launched it we actually had to put like an another one or two months in to get it ready for steam and upload it so in total it was like six months and the simplicity of the project uh, was caused by the time constraints but in in retrospect it was probably good that we had that kind of time constraint because it just uh, forced us to cut everything that wasn't super necessary yeah i mean i think that's another thing that uh that being in an academic environment like that can provide right is that strict uh schedule but like i if i don't get this done on time i'm going to fail my class and uh you know it's it's this is something i think that a lot of indie developers outside of a school environment struggle myself included struggle with of like, got this kind of open-ended idea. We don't know how big it's going to be. <laughs> We don't know when it's going to be done. We don't have a strict time plan. Um, and then you lose motivation or you get, or you kind of end up working too long on one tiny piece. And you're like, wait a minute, this is not, you know, all those kind of rabbit holes that developers can go down when they don't have a lot of clear structure. It sounds like that really worked in your favor to say, nope, this is the time We've got to do something that fits in the box and um, and get it done. Did you see a lot of other people in the program? Were there other cool projects that people got done in that same kind of timeline? They they got a lot of very cool stuff done. I would say um, most of that was finished, but it was not in a in a releasable state where okay. you could yeah. say. Mm, Yep, that sure. could be released on, on Steam or something. But it was definitely a lot of great finished projects that felt a little more pr like prototypes maybe. Right. That still had some issues, but were working for the most part. And I feel like that was, for, for most teams, that was that was an okay result, right? Yep. Game School is about trying things out. It's about uh, learning. So Right. It's not, it's not actually yeah. a commercial production <laughs> yeah, process, yeah. right? Like, um, Yeah. No, that that was not the goal. Not every team had to make a commercial game. Just want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So for us, it was clear that if we want to make a commercial game in four months, we actually have to work even faster and get ahead of the schedule, right? Because you just need a higher level of polish yeah. if you want to have a commercially viable game, which is why really the, the main development took, could only take us a couple of weeks. But I think that something obviously went very right there, right? What do you think it was about, because I honestly, I have a very 50-50 view about mm -hmm. game school in general. <laughs> I think there's a lot of programs, a lot of which are expensive and bad, but it sounds like that there was something that went really well there, not to take away from you guys' own, you know, creativity and initiative in, in making it happen, but, but I don't think that's a coincidence, right? And you said yeah, that no, you thought no, it was no. helpful. <laughs> Uh, you're absolutely right. Something did go very well there, and 
I think it's always hard to say all game schools are bad, all game schools are good. Ob obviously it's mixed, some are good, some are bad. And there are a couple of things how I think you can differentiate between the two. If it's very expensive, <laughs> that's one sign that you probably don't want to go there. <laughs> Um, and obviously you also want to look at what, how the stu student projects look like, if mm. they can actually make any decently looking games when they're done. Uh, and also one third very important point is that their main teaching method is that they teach making games by letting you make games and not by sitting in any theory classes <laughs> and yeah uh, HTW Berlin the school I went to checks all of those boxes so basically the majority of time you spend there is just spent working on games they just give you very good working conditions with everything you need to make games and then they let you make games <laughs> and that's it and that's basically um, yeah I mean, what else do you want, really? <laughs> well, that's that's super interesting, yeah. and I think I I think there's a couple things that you said there. You know, for people, especially people who might be watching this and maybe considering a game program or thinking about should oh, I'm really interested in game design? Do I want to go to a game program? Looking at the quality of the student work, you cannot beat that, right? That this yeah. is the real proof, right? It's like if nobody in this school is making a good game this is a very bad sign. And I think that also part of what you want in uh, being a part of a program like that is a community of people to meet, interact, and work with, right? Like you met the Grizzly guys there and, and were able to launch two projects together. That's huge, right? I think that is actually another really big point. You can roughly tell how good a game school is by how difficult it is to enroll. <laughs> so if they say, okay, if you have the money, you, uh, we'll yeah. take you, that is a bad sign. And if they're a little more picky with um, who they want as, as their students, that is generally speaking a good sign because then you'll get to meet a lot of other talented people, which is really great for networking. Yeah. And that is really a another great thing that game schools can provide you with. I think that's great. The other thing that I thought was interesting and that made me a little bit curious is, is you mentioned good working conditions in this world that we're in now where kind of anybody with a laptop and some YouTube tutorials, right, can sit down and make a game. What do good working conditions for game development look like in your opinion? So basically the way they had it set up there is that they had a lot of space. So basically most of the time students were split up into groups of three or four, which seems to be a very good size for making games. Cause you can't really say, uh, no, I'll just do project management or whatever. You'll, <laughs> get, you'll have to <laughs> get your Shout hands, out to uh, all the producers out there. <laughs> Shout out to all the producers out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, pretty much every team got their own room or mm. got to share the room with maybe one or two other teams if it's a very big room. So we had a lot of space. Basically mm. we, we got, um, get all of the technology we needed f from the yeah. university. So we d didn't have to bring our own laptops. We, they right. had the PCs there, everything we needed that there, they had VR headsets, whatever. Right. <laughs> sure, yeah, but that's... Uh, great coaching. And then of course, what contributed greatly to the good working conditions is just the fact that there were a lot of very talented, friendly, nice other students there. And whenever you had a problem with something, you could always go to somebody who knew what they were doing and could give you a little bit of feedback. That's a really, really good point. And just being able to be around other talented people in and of itself is a, is a great working condition, right? Yeah. A, a good coach just needs to have a good eye, good understanding for games, of course, and needs to be able to point you in a couple of interesting directions, maybe point you to a couple of resources where you can do some research stuff like that right maybe share another game or example or something that maybe you weren't aware of so just having that experience right they can say yeah, exactly. oh i've seen yeah, yeah. something like this and maybe you should look at that i think that's a great point and i think that it sounds like a great program i you know your description of it is kind of the only interaction that i've had with it i've been around I've been a part, you know, teaching a little bit of game development myself and then also been around some other programs. And I think that the, I agree that the emphasis on making games and making games in an environment that facilitates that is probably the best thing that you can do. You can tell people 
lots of things about games and you can show people lots of things about games, but until they actually try to make something, none of that is gonna like land and stick, you know? Thank you.